Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the world of survival horror. It's Resident Evil! It's the HD remaster of the remake of the original game. If you don't know the history of Resident Evil, the original game was released on the PlayStation 1, and some years later it was remade completely for the GameCube with completely re-rendered backgrounds and much, much, much higher quality polygonal models. And for a long time, that version of Resident Evil was considered to be the best one of the classic Resident Evil games before they went to a more um, action-shooting direction with Resident Evil 4 and onward. Resident Evil Remake was considered to be the best of the classic survival horror Resident Evils. And this is a game that I always meant to get back to myself. Uh, I, I only played a little bit of it on the GameCube years ago when I had borrowed a friend's GameCube, and I always meant to get a copy of this myself and play through it, but I never got around to, for whatever reason. So I'm really happy to see that this has now been re-released, and it's been touched up for HD. The uh, backgrounds have not been re-rendered, but they've been touched up, so they, uh, they look okay in HD resolutions. And the polygonal models, I believe, have been improved somewhat as well. So, let's get started and head back to the Spencer Mansion. Resident Evil. So... One thing that we need to know about the display is that there are two options. We can have widescreen, or we can have original. Actually, let me set that to original. Let me go back. So, original is what the, the game is actually rendering. It's a 4x3 screen, because originally, of course, this was on the GameCube. You can set it to widescreen, though, and it will display in 16x9, but since it has pre-rendered backgrounds, the way they do that is they just zoom the camera in and do kind of a pan and scan on the backgrounds. I mean, it's nice to have the entire screen filled up, but let's go with the original aspect ratio since we'd actually be seeing everything there is to see all at once. With controls, we can go with alternate controls, which are more modern 3D game controls, or original, which of course means tank controls. Well, it's Resident Evil 1, so of course we're going with tank controls. So the difficulty levels here are kind of weird. Uh, I believe they added this third one for the remake. The original GameCube one only had these two. So do we like climbing a mountain or going on a hike or taking a walk? The top one is the hardest one, and then it goes down to easy. So let's pick the top one. We like climbing a mountain. And I think that I have enough experience with Resident Evil that I feel that I can, I can do this difficulty level. Of course, we have two characters to pick, Chris Redfield, Jill Valentine, like the original game. This version, however, we can pick some costumes. The Resident Evil 5 version of Chris. Let's go with original Jill. Now, there is a pre-rendered FMV intro, not using real actors, but with uh, pre-rendered graphics. I just want to go by that, because it's actually kind of lengthy. And, I mean, you've probably played some version of Resident Evil before. You've probably already kind of... only three STARS members left now. Captain Wesker, Barry, and myself. We don't know where Chris is. What is this place? Not quite your ordinary house, that's for sure. Hey, Wesker, where's Chris? Jill, no. You don't want to go back out there. But we've got to find... What was that? Chris? No. Jill, go and investigate. I'm going with her. Chris and I go back a long way. All right. You two go. I'll secure this area. Stay sharp. Dining room. And so gameplay begins.
We've run into this mansion. I mean, we we ran in here for shelter because there are zombie dogs running around outside. I'm sure it's okay in here, though. It seems like a nice house. But we did hear a gunshot, so we're looking around to see if we can find Chris, who vanished somewhere. We didn't see where he got off to as we ran into the house. I think you'd better take a look at this. What is it? Blood. Jill, see if you can find any other clues. I'll be examining this. Let's just hope it's not Chris's. All right, Barry. I mean, we can just go off and on our own if you think that's a good idea. Yeah. You getting a lot of information looking at that blood on the ground, are you, Barry? Barry. All right, we can see Barry's real busy looking at that blood, so we should probably just go off on our own and see what we can find. By the way, the uh, animations to open the doors... I believe there has been a, a, a mod, a fan mod, released that can take out those animations. You can't just take them out in the stock game, but it is a PC game, so hey, anything goes, really, in terms of what might be modded into it, really. found a zombie. I mean, I know this was completely unexpected, but there is a zombie in this house. Let's go back to Barry and see what he thinks about this guy. Barry! What is it? Look out! It's a monster! Let me take care of it! What the hell is this thing? I found Kenneth killed by this thing. Let's report this to Wesker. All right, we've started to suspect that maybe this house is not quite what it seems. We should probably tell Wesker we found a zombie because he's just hanging out in the main hall, not doing anything. And eh, we probably don't have to worry about that. Jill, help me look for him. Let's not leave this hall. Good idea. Well, now it's Wesker's turn to disappear, and I guess we have to go look for him. We can look all over the hall if we want, but really, I guess all that's important is to discover whether or not he's behind these stairs. Yep, I don't think he is behind these stairs. I think we have I think we've searched everything pretty thoroughly behind these stairs. Barry. Any luck, Jill? No, nothing. What's going on around here? I can't figure it out. Same here. Chris and now Wesker. There's not much we can do. We can search for him separately. I'll investigate the dining room again. Okay, then I'll try the door on the other side. <sighs> This mansion is gigantic. We could easily get lost. Let's start from the first floor. Okay. Oh, I almost forgot. It's a lockpick. You'd make better use of it. This does seem like a pretty advanced lockpick. I'm sure only a master could use it. Thanks. I may need it. Listen, if something happens, let's meet up in this hall. Got it? Okay. And so begins the adventures of the worst team ever. Let's all split up 
and explore the Death Mansion. It's the only reasonable thing to do. I mean, I guess there is actually a reason for it as we discover. But that's only towards the end of the game. Okay, there's a statue. There's a thing in there. In the original game, there would be, like, stairs that we could push to get to that. But here, I mean, there's no stairs. There is, however, this... These drawers. Maybe we could push those towards the statue. It's a good thing someone just left it here for us. Now, I, I mentioned previously that there were different control schemes. If you're wondering what those are, if you've never used tank controls before, the idea of tank controls is you press up on, on the analog stick and you move forward no matter what direction the character is looking in. Basically, you are controlling the character from the character's viewpoint, not your own. The other control scheme, alternate, What that does is I can move the analog stick in different directions and Jill will move just in that direction. It's good for when you're on one uh, a screen that has one perspective, but as you can as you can see since there are pre-rendered graphics, we move from uh, camera angle to camera angle all the time, which is was the reason that tank controls were in the original game. So you could control the character with the same controls no matter what perspective the camera was in. No matter what perspective we are in, pressing up on the control stick, on the thumbstick, will always move Jill forward. It's a very different control scheme than modern 3D games, so a lot of people don't like it, but I do think that it is very appropriate for this kind of game. So, in the remake of Resident Evil 1, there were these defensive items where if we're attacked by a zombie, then we might be able to, out of desperation, stab the zombie with that knife we have. If such a thing actually happened, I mean. Uh. Oh, we're taken by surprise. Oh no, grab by zombies. All right, there we go. Stab it with the knife. Let's see if I can do this in time. I mean, I could shoot the zombie, but... <sighs> Ammo is precious in the world of survival horror. Uh, can I do it? Or is he going to be able to walk past that? Oh, oh, no, just barely. I almost got him trapped in there. Okay. Well, the music stopped, and there does appear to be a pool of blood underneath that zombie, so I guess we'll never have to worry about him ever again. Alright, I'll need a key before I can get in there. So the mansion in Resident Evil Remake is very similar to the original game, but they have added on a bunch of hallways and rooms that were not in the original. One example of that is this little passageway behind the stairs. In the original game, there's really nothing behind the stairs at all, but now there's this. Yeah, I wonder what's on the other side. It sounds inviting. Alright, let's try heading upstairs. We know that Barry went on the to went to the left side of the um of the of the Grand Hall. So let's stay over on the right side and see if we can find any more doors we can go to. So far everything's locked. Mm, no, I guess there's nothing else we can do here. Gonna have to head over to the other side. I 
a lot of descriptions on everything on the walls. You don't actually need to read any of them, really. But it's kind of a, a nice, nice flavor text that they actually have descriptions for most of the things you will see just lying around. Of course, if you haven't played Resident Evil before, the style of the game is very much going back and forth in this mansion, going back and forth between rooms. And I think I hear someone walking around, and it sounds... squelchy. We go back and forth between the rooms, trying to find items, trying to find keys. Oh, yeah, there he is. <laughs> trying to figure out our way. There's a lot of backtracking in Resident Evil 1. You're gonna, you're gonna get to know this house really well by the end of it. Well, I mean, it's good that that zombie is walking out of the way because Jill has seen something that she does not like. See, a little thing about Jill Valentine, she really does not like fine art. She can't stand, she really cannot stand the sight of it. What does Jill do when she sees a fine sculpture? You see that? You see what she did there? She's not sorry. She'd do it again. That zombie is stumbl stumbling over here, moaning, Oh no, my statue! I was taking care of that. Why, why would you do that? Okay, both these doors are locked. But at least we destroyed a, a, a sculpture. At least Jill has done that. So this day has not been a waste. All right, let's keep walking around. So, if you've played the original game, something you might have noticed is that there are additional doors that we uh, we have come across. Doors that were not in the original game. And a bunch of those doors have been locked. All right, I guess we're just going to have to follow where Barry went anyway. All these other doors we can't seem to go through. A dining room. All right, there's this thing. It seems like a puzzle. There's a painting next to it. Short sword through the chest, long sword through the head. I mean, maybe that has something to do with something at some point. <laughs> I don't know. Jill could take a look at the fruits of her labor over here. I mean, yeah, we could take the blue gemstone. I mean, I don't know why we would need such a thing, but we can take it. You'd think that Jill would have her mind on more serious issues, like finding Chris, being concerned about what these zombies are all about. But no, let's stop and pick up the gem from the statue we busted. Oh, how you doing? Oh, here's our compatriot from Bravo Team. And in the original game, Kenneth was holding a load of ammo, but this time he's just holding a tape and no ammo, so that's not very welcome. But something that has been added is this door over here, which was not in the original game. Keep in mind, when I keep saying the original game, I do mean the PlayStation game, not the GameCube remake. This game is the GameCube remake, retouched up for HD screens. We want to conserve as much ammo as possible. And like, there's a zombie lying down right there. He's not fooling anyone. I mean, let's try not to get near him in case he gets up. So, green herbs heal us. I'm almost out of uh, storage spaces in my inventory, so I'm going to want to find a magic box that I can put these in at some point. So I can lighten the load and be able to take more stuff. And that's another thing about Resident Evil 1. It has a really strict item management system. Especially with Chris, because with Jill, you can hold two more items than you can with Chris. Uh... 
And you have to be very wary about what items you, you are carrying at any one time. Hmm. Because we don't want to be out of inventory slots when we find an item that we really need. Well, someone has a pretty high opinion of death. I guess? I mean, we need a key. Well, alright, that did not turn out how we expected. I guess we probably should put it back. I mean, we need the key, but we need to live even more. So, I think, actually, with Resident Evil Remake, that we're playing right now... I think you actually get more out of it if you've played the original game. Because, while, I mean, this obviously is a lot more modern than the original PlayStation game, there are a lot of references in this game that you won't get if you have not played the original. A lot of, a lot of, a lot of times where they will play on your expectations, where they will count on you having played the original game, and they do something to mess you up. Oh, I can see some walking around in that mirror. Oh, okay, just gonna walk around you. If that's okay. Like for example, that puzzle with the um with the shield that was coming in to kill us, that was not in the original Resident Evil. That was something that was new for this. Alright, we can examine items that we pick up, and maybe there's a reason- Oh, there's ammo. Uh. I got greedy. But precious ammo, I needs it. I mean, if, I think if someone has not played any version, oh, we're back here. I think if someone has not played any version of Resident Evil 1, then going back to the original game might be kind of rough, but... I do think you do get more out of this version of it if you do... if you are familiar with the original. Alright, there's one door that we saw that we did not go into, and it was this one. Kinda... kinda camouflaged into the wall. But it is a door. I do think that the pre-rendered uh, backgrounds do hold up really well. I mean, I know it's not just straight up the 640x480 backgrounds that were in the GameCube game, but... Whoop. I think I am all out of defensive items. Yep. But that just gives me the opportunity to free up some item slots. Ha are you how are you doing down there? You're doing okay? I think he's dead. Nope, no, he's not. Resident Evil 1 also harkens back to a time when what? Now, he's just being ridiculous. He's being difficult is what he is. Alright, now I think he's down. I can see the pool of blood. As I was saying, Resident Evil 1 harkens back to a time when... Zombies in a video game are actually kinda cool! Not overused in the slightest, yet. 
Ah, uh, times gone by. Alright, there's an arrow thing there, and we have an arrow thing ourselves. We can examine it. And by examining, examining it, we can remove this arrowhead. Uh, the Spencer Mansion really does have the best locks and keys. I would like to see just a documentary on the everyday working conditions in the Spencer Mansion and how exactly anyone actually did their job here. So this was a new area for the GameCube version. Not in the original one. We have faces, and it looks like that there are pieces of the faces that are missing. And a, well, kind of ominous-looking casket hanging up on there. I wonder who's buried here. Well, oh, and the, the casket hanging over something called the Book, Book of Curses. Now, we can look at the Book of Curses, and when we look at it, something we'll realize is that the key for a bunch of those locked doors in the house uh, is actually on the back of it. So that means anyone who wanted to unlock those doors would have to come down into the crypt. But don't forget the arrowhead before you come down, because, I mean, it would be... Obviously, you can't come down here if you don't have that. All right! That sounds promising. Let's take a look at the key we just picked up. Alright, it's the sword key, and I know that we've seen some doors that have had engravings of swords on them. That second one, there's a second zombie hanging around, but I guess he's just doing off, doing his thing. Just zombieing around. Right, whatever that is, we can't get at it. So, let's head back and try to find some of those sword doors. Alright, I probably should have kept track of what where the sword doors were. Can the map help us with this? Well, the map only really shows us the red doors signifying that they're locked and not that they have swords on them. All right. Got lucky. Unfortunately, that sword key will now take up an item space until... I hear squelching. It'll take up an item space until we actually open up all of the sword doors. Alright, where is it? There you are, Squelchy. I'm running low on ammo, but... Hmm. Let's hang out in here. Nope, we can't hang out in there. Can I run around him? Yep. Nope. Not quite. I really need this armor key to get anywhere, it seems. There's a thing? Uh, I guess I'll take it. I guess Jill does not want to look at any descriptions of any things, ha any any paintings hanging on the wall right now. Sure, why not? I, th why wouldn't we need a dog whistle?
All right, so something that we need is apparently being held in the collar of one of these dogs. Actually, we haven't seen any of the dogs in this video yet, have we? Oh, lighter of lighter. Unfortunately, we have no room for a lighter. Um, our pockets are just completely full. We really can't fit a lighter anywhere. Really. But fortunately, I do bel Oh, there's a zombie down there. I guess we'll just have to get past him to... Yep, get in here. All right, and the safe room music plays as, as we, have, we have gotten to our first safe room, and it tells us how we can, we're supposed to be disposing of dead bodies. I mean, we really haven't been doing anything, we've just been shooting them, but that's okay, right? Well, we haven't actually been doing either of those. I mean, we've been doing okay, just with our current method of shooting them until they fall down. I don't see why we would need anything new. We could use the ink ribbons to save, but eh, why would we need to do that? Let's put the blue gemstone away, uh, this wooden mount, and this dog whistle. The knife also, we don't really, we won't really need, I mean... In some Resident Evils, the knife is better than others, but in this version of the game... The knife really isn't so great. Alright, so we can fill up our canteen with kerosene. I mean, for some reason, if we needed to, like, burn something, but, uh, I don't know. I'm also pretty hurt, so let's use this first aid spray. The first aid spray does restore all of our health, as opposed to the green herbs, which only does a portion. Unless we were able to enhance the herbs in some way. Oop. Too fast, just too agile for zombies. And that, yeah, really in Resident Evil 1, you do have to be pretty good at controlling the characters, because you won't always have enough ammo to take everyone out, even though we do have... Not a not bad amount of ammo right now. Not really great, but okay. An okay amount. Oh, what a pretty room. Wow, someone really went all out on the decorations here. It's a really fancy mansion in some ways, and then really just dilapidated in others. The mansion re in Resident Evil really is one of the most memorable video game locations. I don't really think we need to take one. Oh, someone just leaving a shotgun on the wall. Well, I mean, that's something that we could really make use of. Alright, let's head on out. Well, oh goodness, why would someone even build a room to do this? Someone really wants to keep their shotgun, I guess. Oh god, what did I do now? Wesker! Barry! Help! Jill! You in there? Barry? Get me out of here! The door's jammed! Stand back! <sighs> Grab my hand! <sighs> Ugh! 
<clears throat> Barry! That was a close one. A second late, you would have fit nicely into a sandwich. Really? Thanks. But Barry, didn't you say you were going back to the dining room to find other clues? I'm glad and all, but why are you here? I just had something I wanted to check. Anyway, we should get back to searching for Wesker and Chris. Thanks, Barry. I owe you one. Don't mention it. Yep, we should just get right back to splitting up, even though we can plainly see that's a bad idea. Whatever. Let's uh, go back in here. Well, we, we can't go back. So, maybe that's just about enough for this look at Resident Evil HD Remake. I mean, you get the idea. It's Resident Evil. You know what Resident Evil's all about. Well, that's where I just came from. And I just wanted to do a little video of this, just because I'm really happy to see that this game has been re-released on modern systems. So, everyone can now get their hands on this classic. And I mean, hey, could there be a possibility of remaking any other old Resident Evil games in this way? I mean, probably not, because I'm sure that the process of actually doing the GameCube remake took a lot of time and money, I'm sure. And Capcom probably doesn't see the, uh, doesn't see, probably does not feel that there would be a much of a reason for doing that again. But eh, at least we got this. Well, yeah, let's get rid of all that dirty water. That's right, let it all out. I mean, it is kind of a disgusting situation that these characters find themselves in. And what did we get for our troubles? Uh, just an, another dagger. Well, like I said, that's, I guess that's going to be it for this look at Resident Evil HD Remake. Um, I really, I'm re like I said, I'm really happy it came out. I think that the remake of Resident Evil was probably the best remake of any game ever, probably. I can't think of another uh, example of an older game being completely remade and the result being, being as good, <laughs> good as this was. By the way, I need... A neat thing is that that only really happens if you, as I found out, it only happens if you go through the hallway from that direction. If we had headed through the other direction, the dogs don't actually come out. So it's little twists like that that I mean, that they try to get you with if you're familiar with the uh, original Resident Evil. But anyway, that's it, I think, for Resident Evil HD. It's available now on the PC. Uh, it's available on the PlayStation 4, the Xbox One. Um, the PC... For oh, hold on. Oh, Jill. Got any good news? Other than I'm still alive in this madhouse? No. Can't say it's much safer here, either. We'd better secure our escape route first. There's gotta be a back door somewhere. All right, then. Let's split up again. Hey, hold on a sec. Look what I've found. What? A can of fizz. It's sure to yellow and mellow those things. It's yours. Hopefully you won't have to use it. All right. Thanks. What about you? Oh, don't worry. I like the buddy system we have here. I see. Thanks. I'll take it. See you later. Ciao. So Barry gave us something that's really powerful, especially against living things, but we don't actually have the grenade launcher to use it.
But like I was saying, that's it. F- okay, yes. Finally, this this time th- it is it for this is it for Resident Evil One HD available on PC, PlayStation Four, Xbox One. If you're wondering which version to get, my understanding is that the PC version is the only one that actually runs at 60 frames per second. The PS4 and the Xbox One versions only run at 30 frames a second. So if you want to play this game, probably the PS4 version is the best bet to go with. But I mean, probably probably any of the versions are all right. It's just that the PC version probably is the best of the bunch. So that's it for Resident Evil 1 HD Remake. While I'm being chased by this dog. I suggest you play it. And I would suggest you do not open the front door. I'll see you around.